In this section, I will talk about overall techniques for successful benzodiazepine tapering or deprescribing. There are several different techniques that you can utilize with your patient or educate your patient about when approaching benzodiazepine tapering. Some individuals will find it useful to utilize a mix of techniques or might start with one and then transition to another. So the first technique is the cut and hold technique, and this is the most common one utilized throughout medicine because it's the most easily explained to most patients and can use the tablets or dosage forms that a medication comes in. So you advise a patient to make a percentage dose reduction of their current dose, usually by telling them the equivalent in milligrams or fractions of milligrams. And then you have them hold that reduction until any withdrawal symptoms subside. The benefits of this is accomplished utilizing the existing forms of the medication that a patient can receive from the pharmacy. Patients can fairly easily, usually half and potentially even quarter tablets that they have. Some patients can do this just with a tablet cutter. I've had other patients recommend purchasing special medication scissors online that they found are really useful. The cons of this approach is that you become limited as you make subsequent reductions in how small of a reduction you can make or percentage reduction you can make because of the tablet forms that the medications come in. So an example of a cut and hold would be a patient on 20 milligrams of diazepam does an initial dose reduction of 5% to kind of test out how they respond to it. This would be one milligram. So you would prescribe the patient 10 milligram tablets. They could take one and a half for 15. And then you could also prescribe them two milligram tablets to make up the additional five. So they would be taking two, two milligram tablets. I will say I often have to write these things out. I write them out multiple times, send them in a message to the patient, put it on the script or say on the script of please follow taper instructions, have to you know calculate and double check when patients are able or their family members ask them to also do a double check just because it, you can start to get yourself a little mixed up as you do these reductions. Also helpful if you have a pharmacist that can assist you. And I will often call the pharmacy and speak to the pharmacist about, I'm engaging in this patient with a benzodiazepine taper. You'll see that I'm sending two scripts for different amounts and I'll put in the note that there's two scripts or that I'm cross tapering from one to the other and that's why they're on two benzodiazepines. And that way they're in communication with me and aware of why they're getting all these prescriptions. The cut and hold method is what the Ashton protocol utilizes. In her case, she cross-tapered folks to diazepam in order to be able to make smaller percentage dose reductions more easily because diazepam comes as low as two milligram tablets, which can easily be cut in half or quarter. Diazepam also comes in a liquid, so some patients also find that makes them able to make even smaller reductions near the end. However, a limitation to the Ashton protocol is that some patients really do not tolerate diazepam due to increased sedation, especially in the elderly where their hepatic metabolism has decreased. I found that we often hit a threshold of what they can tolerate cross-tapering them to. I think it, it always bears repeating that the Ashton manual, while it provides some example protocols, is really intended to be a flexible approach where you're working with the patient to adjust the taper rate. Another tapering technique is known as a micro taper, and this is also sometimes referred to as a hyperbolic taper. In a micro taper, folks are going to make micro reductions on a daily basis with the goal to have an overall certain percent reduction across a month. So this is to really capitalize on that, you know, thinking of that diagram of the homeostatic set point and changing the dose where you're just really trying to make small reductions, allowing the brain and body to adjust more easily. And folks will often reduce every one to three days using either a precision scale liquid or a compounding pharmacy because the commercial formulations are not available in small enough doses for them to reduce comfortably. 
A benefit is that it can really allow for finer adjustment and symptom control because of the dose limitations with the commercially available doses. And many report that they feel like their symptoms are better controlled with this approach. The con is this really is an off-label method, right? You're no longer getting the manufactured tablet. You're starting to have patients, you know, modifying how they're taking it, whether that's using a scale and shaving off pieces. And of course, some of our patients probably do it with more precision than others. And so there's a risk that it's actually imprecise. We don't know exactly what our patients are taking or how. So I've talked about the techniques for tapering, and now I want to talk about kind of the methods that you might use to engage in these techniques. So there's kind of five different methods you might use. The first, as we discussed, is using the commercial tablet or capsule as it's available and either using it whole or splitting it in halves or maybe even quarters. The second approach is using the manufacturer's oral liquid either alone or further diluted. Just make sure that they follow instructions about how they can dilute it or ask the pharmacist about what is appropriate to use to dilute it, like distilled water versus other liquids. This does allow for fine taper reductions via finely graduated syringe. The third method is compounded prescriptions. And then the other two taper methods, one is using a liquid titration where individuals will take the tablet or capsule and mix it with a liquid such as water, milk, or suspension vehicle, and then make their own reductions via finely graduated syringe. And last, using a precision scale. So individuals can weigh drug or powder or capsule content and then make dry cuts with a pill cutter, razor, or file. Using a liquid titration, there's a lot of online support to educate patients about doing this. It's important to know that many medications are not water soluble. So if you put them into water, it doesn't become a equally distributed solution and instead has to be constantly stirred liquid suspension to distribute the medication as evenly as possible. Therefore, there's a significant risk of imprecision dose to dose. So would recommend using a USP grade suspension vehicle if they're going to do a liquid titration just to try to limit that imprecision. Additionally, there is some thought that some of these medications might be able to be diluted like the clonazepam oral disintegrating tablet into milk. This is still considered off-label, but is being recommended in the new Maudsley textbook. And they felt in their review of the properties of the medication that it was a reasonable way to approach doing a liquid titration with clonazepam. In compounded prescriptions, would recommend that you help patients identify pharmacies where there's a pharmacist associated with either the International Academy of Compounding Pharmacists or the Professional Association of Compounding Pharmacists, just to ensure that they're using as much precision as possible when compounding the prescriptions. Again, the compounded prescription liquid titration precision scale are all off-label methods that have not undergone any systematic review and have limitations because there's kind of greater room for imprecision depending on the patient and what tools they're using to engage in the method. There was a review done by Horowitz and a group of colleagues looking at how 13 different deprescribing practices approach deprescribing, eight practices in the UK and five from other countries. And in analyzing the interviews from these individuals, they found that overall, the approach is a gradual taper of medications, often over more than a year. I think that's an important thing to keep in mind, that it is extremely important to provide support and reassurance throughout the process as well as psychosocial support for the management of underlying conditions. I have found it extremely useful to engage in cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia with my patients that have been taking these medications for sleep or find that they start to have more sleep difficulty when tapering off of them, as well as other psychotherapies, especially cognitive behavioral therapy or mindfulness-based practices to help with anxiety and overall distress. So just to review the key points from this section, there are two different taper techniques that our patients could engage in. One is the more traditional cut and hold method utilized in the Ashton manual. 
where you do a percentage reduction of the current dose and then hold until symptoms subside. The other is a micro reduction where on a daily basis, you might be making a small micro reduction with the goal of doing a certain percentage reduction over the course of a month. And the first one is the one that can be utilized with the available commercial tablet or capsule or oral liquid. The micro reductions require off-label approaches such as compounded prescription liquid titration or precision scale. And to just reiterate again and again, I mean, the importance that the taper rate and amount is really adjusted based on patient's tolerability to the taper. 